father of man who was found with human body parts in fridge speaks, makes shocking confession. In a dimly lit room of a four-roomed house in the belly of White City Soweto, Paul Labangwain buried his face in his hands. Labangwain is feebly trying to make sense of the macabre crime his son Flavio Labangwain is accused of. If he is guilty, then he deserves to be punished, said Labangwain. Labangwain had caught wind of the grisly discovery of body parts in Protea Glen, about 30 minutes away from his home, but little did he know that his son was the man arrested for concealing human remains in his fridge. I don't understand why he, allegedly, did this and I don't understand the meaning. What pushed him to, allegedly, do something like this, said Labangwain. Flavio, 26, is scheduled to appear in the Protea Magistrate's Court today on a charge of murder. It will be the first time the father and son will see each other in years, but it will be far from a happy reunion. I'll be in court to see and support my son as far as I am allowed to. The law needs to take its course because if he is guilty of doing what he is being accused of then he needs to be punished. Labangwain drifts off and recalls how he used to take his son to creche every morning, when their talks would be centered on his future. At that age he was a child but he used to say that he wanted to go to university. That was his dream, he said. Despite living a few blocks away from his son's home, the pair met on rare occasions. His mother and I separated in 2012 when he was in Matrix. That was the last time we engaged directly. I had lost my job and things were not going well. Since then until he graduated we met at the open field across from my home, he said while pointing through the window of his living room. Even though he lives nearby, I could not go to his mother's house, so I would call him and we would meet outside. If I had our 100 I would make sure that I give him our 50 because that is all that I had, he said. Lebangwain is not shy to explain the strained relationship he had with his son lately. I have been hearing that he is married. He once called me and asked me what my father's name was because he wanted to name his son after his grandfather but he did not tell me he was married, especially to his cousin, he said. Last week, Flavio's mother, Grace Lebangwain acknowledged knowing her son's partner but neglected to mention that it was her niece. However, when our news team returned to her home three days later Grace, who was in the presence of two police officers, instructed one of her daughters to refuse the team access to her home. Though not confirmed by the police, the deceased family admitted to knowing the identity of the woman whose body parts were found in Flavio's deep freezer. On Wednesday police found a head suspected to be the woman's. Police spokesperson Colonel Brenda Muradilli said the head, along with the arms and legs, were taken to the forensic laboratory to confirm the identity of the deceased. When we contacted the woman's father and even though he acknowledged that his daughter had perished, he said he could not comment at this stage and would allow police investigations to unfold. A close family friend, who spoke to Sowetan yesterday and asked not to be named, confirmed that the deceased and Lebang Wayne were married despite being cousins. The family friend refused to speculate about the motive for the murder but said they were privy to Lebang Wayne's family dynamics. We know what was happening with the deceased and what led to her and Lebang Wayne being married. Although we are not sure how long they were married, we know that there was something that was happening, said the family friend. Right now the deceased's family, her sibling and her father, are still coming to terms with what has happened even though the police have not confirmed the status of the DNA results. Latest on Soweto body parts case, murder accused tries to commit suicide again. Community members attending the case of murder accused Flavio Labangwain cheered when they heard that the 26-year-old had abandoned his bail application and would be kept in the hospital facilities of Johannesburg Prison, infamously known as Sun City. Labangwain made his second appearance at the Protea Magistrate's Court today, where his lawyer revealed that he had attempted to commit suicide in jail for the second time since his arrest on Saturday last week. Human body parts were discovered in his fridge in his Protea Glen home in Sowet earlier in November. His partner is said to have made the grisly discovery while he was out shopping. Magistrate David Mhango postponed the case until November 30th when Labangwain's lawyer, Gift McCube, is expected to submit an application for his client's mental evaluation. McCube said. Special care is needed and should be provided for him where he will be kept in custody. During court proceedings Lebangwain seemed confused and disoriented with his head bound in bandages and his eyes staring at the floor. His mother, three sisters and a cousin were present during the brief proceedings. The court also heard that his application to be represented by the Legal Aid Board was declined for not meeting the requirements. National Prosecuting Authority Houding spokesperson Findim John Andwain said that Labangwain's income exceeded the limit used to determine whether an accused person could afford a private lawyer. Gender activist and community developer Fikil Mazibuko from the Enough Movement said that if Labangwain were granted bail, the community would not be afraid to take the law into their own hands. 
Mazibuko said. He gruesomely killed a woman, allegedly, so we were going to make sure that he also does not live. I really hope justice will prevail and that he will rot in jail with no bail ever being granted. She said the law must be tougher on gender-based violence crimes, as it is the only way to stop the scourge. We also call on the police to stop ridiculing women who come and report these crimes at an early stage. If police take us seriously and do their job then most of the killings will be stopped before they can happen, said Mazibuko. People in his neighborhood described him as a peace-loving bookworm who didn't have friends and was always in the company of his mother, Grace Labangwain. They said that they were shocked when they heard what had happened. Labangwain was married to his cousin, Chi Pong Saip, and it is suspected that the human remains in his home were hers. Meanwhile, a ruthless man sentenced to life imprisonment. Today, the Middlebore High Court has sentenced Morgan Mashia, aged 30 for life imprisonment after being charged with murder, attempted murder and arson. The court heard that on 18th of August 2020, the accused bought petrol and poured it inside the house he was occupying with Kosimfel and their daughter. He then locked the three himself, his girlfriend as well as their daughter, inside the house and furthermore pushed the couch against the door to ensure that no one escapes. He then set the house on fire. While the house was in flames, he shouted for help and managed grab the keys and threw them outside through the window. He managed to escape and left the two inside. Fortunately, Kosimple covered her daughter with a blanket and also managed to get out of the house however with serious burn wounds. Kosimple died three days later. The accused was arrested on the same day. He was subsequently charged, trialed and convicted. The accused was sentenced as follows. Hash life imprisonment for account of murder. Number 5 years for attempted murder for the 7 years old daughter. Number 5 years for arson. Hashtag all sentences will run concurrently. The Provincial Commissioner of Mpumalanga Lt. Gen. Semakalang Daphne Manamala has appreciated the sterling work displayed by the investigation team, the prosecution, as well as the judiciary as the sentence will serve a deterrent to the wannabe criminals. This will assist in bringing closure to the matter especially to the affected families. The issue of gender-based violence and on the national agenda and I will ensure that the perpetrators are brought to book without any hesitation. I am also very happy that I see more and more convictions to these cases. This will bring hope to the community she said.